Well, welcome everybody. Welcome to the first actually of a series of um, presentations that we're going to be doing by the region. So this is a showcase of New Zealand. It's a teaser so that you can have a look and feel of what New Zealand is like. So you can look to see what it's like to live, work, and even work remotely in that area and to visit uh, that area as well. So first up, um, we have got the Bay of Plenty and the session is gonna be run by Greg Simmons from Priority One. I've known Greg for a lot of time now, a long, long time, <laughs> and he's always been a fan of the fellows and he was actually gonna be running an in-person uh, business orientation day for you when we shut the borders uh, in February of 2020. So it's really good that Greg is first uh, cab off the rank. So please, Greg, if you would like to introduce the rest of your team. And just for the fellows that are here, I have got the presentation will be available afterwards. The PowerPoint will be available afterwards. And there is a document as well that follows alongside this. So well, to you, Greg. everybody, and uh, thanks so much, Michelle. Uh, just bear with me, I'll just share my screen. Perfect, that looks good. Great, you can all see that. Fabulous. So, um, look, welcome um, uh, to Tauranga, everybody, um, New Zealand's um, fifth largest and, and fastest growing city. Um, I'll just uh, introduce the, uh, the team with us today. Uh, you know Michelle, obviously. Uh, we've got... Um, here, my colleague uh, Meg Davis, uh, who works with me at Priority One, which is the uh, economic development agency for Tauranga City. Uh, and uh, here, uh, Marie, uh, sorry, Nina Levia uh, uh, from Enterprise Angels, our angel uh, investor network. Uh, and she'll talk to us a bit uh, later about the capital uh, network infrastructure here in, uh, in Tauranga. Uh, we've also got uh, Steve Saunders, who's probably known to many of you, um, Chief Executive and Founder of Robotics Plus, and he'll talk about uh, Robotics Plus and the Hawk Tech, sort of every tech sector locally. Was that just me? Also, Marie Magnuson. It, it's uh, I think it's Greg. Uh, their internet's yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah I think it's on Greg then. Yeah, Greg, your and your uh, internet is cutting in and out, so we've missed from um, you did Nina, and then we missed from there. Ah, okay. Can you can you hear me now? Yes. Yep. So um, we've got uh, so I've introduced Nina. Then um, we've also got Marie Magnuson from Waikato University. Uh, Marie uh, runs the Algal Biotechnology uh, Program for Waikato and will give us a bit of an overview of all things marine biotech um, in the region. Uh, and finally, David Hoppel, uh, a recent US uh, migrant investor. Um, and David will be able to give you a bit of a sense of um, uh, his experience of New Zealand and uh, particularly Tauranga. And then we'll open up for some uh, Q&A. Every morning, we face a choice. Do we roll over and hit snooze? Or do we get up and reach for our shoes? Do we wait for our dreams to come true? Or do we go out and chase them? Do we follow the road well-traveled? Or do we carve a path of our own? To a place where drive is rewarded. Welcome to New Zealand's fastest growing city. Where doing things differently isn't so different. place for the businesses of tomorrow.
home of world-changing ideas. Genuine collaboration. Endless adventures. innovators of today. And a lifestyle beyond compare. Tauranga Moana, join us. So look, I hope that short little intro video gave you a bit of a sense of uh, our Tauranga as a city and indeed uh, New Zealand as a, as a country. Um, we're certainly a country that really welcomes um, smart, globally connected people and, uh, and certainly um, uh, are looking for um, the sorts of um, um, people that uh, you as fellows uh, represent to, uh, to help us as uh, local businesses, as, as community and as a nation to really thrive, I guess, in the uh, 21st century. So um, I just wanted to uh, give you a brief kind of overview of, uh, of Tauranga as a city. Um, many people are unaware of Tauranga until they actually hit uh, New Zealand. Uh, and generally what we find is that um, a lot of the people we work with from a skilled and investor migrant and, and Edmund Hillary Fellowship perspective uh, actually hear about Tauranga pretty quickly once they do land in Auckland. We're about 200 um, kilometres or 120 miles uh, from uh, Auckland uh, city uh, and located um, in, on the east coast of New Zealand's North Island within what's referred to as the Golden Economic Triangle. So uh, within that triangle, which borders the cities of Auckland, Hamilton and Tauranga, uh, we have over half of New Zealand's population and, half, and over half of New Zealand's um, uh, total uh, economic uh, output. So it, it's very much um, the powerhouse of, um, of New Zealand's economy. Within Tauranga itself, uh, it's a very family friendly uh, coastal environment. Um, a lot of people like it uh, because it's got a great mix of both the lifestyle attributes um, and being close proximity to the harbours, oceans, uh, lakes, forests, mountain biking, skiing, all that kind of thing, um, as well as having a very strong commercial uh, sector. So uh, for those people that are really looking uh, to, to mix that balance of lifestyle and commercial interests and activities, um, then um, Tauranga stacks up really well. Uh, that proximity to Auckland City, our major uh, and largest commercial centre, is also um, of benefit uh, to Tauranga and the people that choose to, uh, to live and reside here because you can get to Auckland um, very quickly. It's um, a 25 minute flight from Tauranga Airport. We're in two, as a city, we've had very strong investment um, over a number of years in our residential and commercial uh, development. Um, and increasingly in our city amenity and infrastructure, uh, also in our education and R&D uh, infrastructure. So the city uh, has grown quite strongly um, over the last uh, decade, um, certainly the fastest growing city in terms of both population growth and GDP growth of any city uh, in New Zealand in that time frame. And uh, one of the unique features of Tauranga is that uh, we are home to the port of Tauranga, which is New Zealand's largest uh, seaport or export gateway. And also to the number one kiwi fruit brand in the world. So uh, Zespri uh, International is headquartered here in Tauranga uh, because about 80% of uh, kiwi fruit is grown in the rural hinterlands surrounding uh, Tauranga city. And as um, Nina will talk about shortly, Enterprise Angels is actually also the largest uh, angel network in New Zealand. Just in terms of our uh, sort of economic profile, you'll see we've got a, a population of around, uh, it's about 215,000 people now uh, within, the, uh, within the city uh, and um, uh, a employment market of about 105,000 uh, jobs. Uh, GDP, as you can see there, 
um, around um, 11 million uh, uh, New Zealand, or sorry, 11 billion New Zealand dollars, uh, and um, a mean annual income uh, of around 60,000 uh, New Zealand dollars. That is slightly below uh, the annual, a mean annual income for New Zealand as a whole, uh, and that's predominantly um, uh, because of a, um, a bit of a sector, uh, sector mix that we have here in terms of quite a high proportion of primary uh, industries uh, and also, um, you know, a tourism and, and, and high, um, large tourism and retail sector. However, we are actually growing our knowledge intensive jobs, so those jobs in tech, professional services, healthcare, et cetera, at a faster rate than the rest of New Zealand. So um, uh, at the current rate, we're expecting to exceed uh, the New Zealand mean annual income within the next uh, decade. From a lifestyle perspective, uh, certainly we sum the city up as a, as a great place for active lifestylers. So as I briefly mentioned, uh, you know, access to surfing, sailing, golf, mountain biking, skiing, hiking, all that sort of stuff, very easily accessible uh, from Tauranga. Uh, and uh, we also um, have a great uh, sort of, I guess, culture from a cafe, restaurant, coffee perspective. Um, we have the highest sunshine hours of any major city in New Zealand. So it's very much an outdoors uh, lifestyle. Um, and we've also had significant growth in our migrant communities uh, over the last five to 10 years, which has seen a real diversity um, in our demographics um, and, um, and a real internationalization of our city as well. Uh, coupled with that, there's been significant investment in healthcare uh, and education R&D uh, facilities uh, within the city uh, as well over the last uh, decade. Uh, and in 2019, we opened our um, uh, university campus here in Tauranga as well, alongside our um, uh, technical institute for more vocational uh, careers. Uh, Mount Monganui Beach is rated uh, consistently one of the best uh, beaches in New Zealand. Um, and uh, Tauranga has a very rich uh, Māori culture as well. Uh, Māori recognised, uh, were very early to recognise uh, Tauranga and the wider uh, Bay of Plenty region is a very fertile region, uh, very good soil quality, so um, a great place to grow things. And uh, obviously uh, that's evidenced by uh, um, kiwi fruit uh, production uh, surrounding the city, uh, but also other horticultural crops like uh, avocados, etc. And quite a big um, food manufacturing um, sector here as well. From a government perspective, um, we're um, a growth region and recognised as such by the government and have a strong partnership uh, with the government in terms of supporting uh, infrastructure growth over uh, the next 50 years. And we're also an accredited welcoming community um, and uh, that speaks to um, the uh, increase in uh, international connections and diversity that I mentioned uh, before. From an education perspective, this is one of the things that often when we're talking to people such as yourselves and, and uh, skilled and investor migrants as well, that they're most interested in, uh, particularly if you've got families of your own. Uh, we do offer the full range of public and private schooling options locally. Um, we have um, uh, also the full mix of single sex co-educational religious uh, denominations. And we do have um, a local university. Um, Marie will, will talk a little bit more about that um, shortly. Uh, and also our home to um, Toy Ohomai, which is part of our National Institute of Skills uh, and Technology, um, our vocational training provider. Uh, we also have a number of research centres of excellence, everything from plant science, um, artificial intelligence, uh, marine, forestry, and wood products. Uh, and uh, we certainly um, uh, invest strongly in our education system uh, and our business, the local businesses are also very involved um, in, um, in our education system right from primary, secondary uh, and tertiary level um, to ensure that um, they have really early access to some of the talent that's coming through that pipeline and also to ensure that our students, our young, young people are really well um, aware of the career opportunities that are available locally and the skill needs that um, businesses are looking for um, in the future.
So very much, um, Tauranga is a city for skilled and talented people. Um, we love um, what the EHF um, program does and, um, and certainly welcome uh, fellows here to come and visit. Um, and, uh, and we can certainly help connect you uh, with, um, with others locally and, uh, um, and ensure that your uh, time in New Zealand is, is well spent. I'll hand over to Steve now to uh, give a bit of an overview of Robotics Plus and the and the port tech sector. Steve. Cool. Kia ora everyone. I'm Steve Saunders. I'm the uh, um, founder and CEO of Robotics Plus. Um, I wear a number of hats. I'm also a grower, um, significant grower in horticulture. I've been growing for over 30, 38 years now. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm also a um, multiple sort of I've started a number of companies over the years with successful exits. Um, so I also heavily invest back into the community. So as um, a founder of WNT, uh, our local tech incubator, which is a, a private sector and government initiative where we invest seed money into early stage companies. Uh, also am a director and one of the founding members of Plant Tech, which is a regional research institute, which is um, focused on artificial intelligence and data and, and particularly focused into the agritech sector. Um, and also sitting in a number of other funds and initiatives and, and, and invest directly myself into, um, into various companies as well. Um, Robotics Plus is really founded on the premise of really tackling some of these um, labour constraints that we're starting to really see in the markets today, particularly in the ag tech sector. Um, you know, that, that last point of where pe people stand, uh, those jobs that people don't want to do or the way we um, describe it as the dull, dirty, dangerous jobs. Um, Robotics Plus was formed uh, just on 10 years ago, but really accelerated um, in 2018 uh, after receiving investment uh, from Yamaha Motor Co Japan. Uh, we're now a team of uh, over 95, um, quite, a, quite a large early stage company. Uh, we have three core areas of uh, automation that we work in, and that's port side automation. So we do a lot of automation around the forestry industry. Um, really removing people from dangerous jobs. Uh, we have our fruit packing um, automation portfolio, which is packing fruit in in, uh, um, in the pack houses. Our target's mainly around specialty tree crops, so apples, um, stone fruit, those types of crops. Um, so we have machines now globally across Europe, America, Australia, New Zealand, uh, um, and uh, just heading into South America at the moment. And then our third uh, sort of portfolio that we follow is uh, autonomous vehicles. So uh, automated spraying, mowing, those sorts of tasks within orchards. Um, so again, removing people from um, uh, dangerous situations. So we've uh, got just released our first machines up into Napa Valley, actually, um, around automated vineyard um, tasking with spraying, etc. cetera. Um, the reason why New Zealand, I guess, um, New Zealand is a primary sector-based country. Uh, we're known to be some of the best producers of specialty tree crops. So on a product, productive basis, New Zealand uh, uh, with apples is probably the, the most productive country globally. Um, the unique thing about New Zealand is that we are so far from the market that everything we do has to be premium focused to actually compete globally. Um, so um, we have great centres of excellence here in New Zealand with Plant and Food Research who do, um, you know, breeding specific varieties. So the Zespri Gold came out of uh, Plant and Food Research. Uh, if you think about apple varieties, MV, Jazz, Rocket Apple, they're all global um, licensed varieties, came out of New Zealand. Um, so we, we have a, in our DNA a lot around um, breeding specific um, varieties, uh, high value varieties. And then because of our distance from market, our growers are incredibly innovative in the, in the sense that, um, you, you know, to compete, uh, we're all about quality and we're also about production. So highly innovative ecosystem. It also brings an advantage of counter seasonal testing where we can test in uh, multiple markets. So we can be testing uh, technologies here in New Zealand. We grow most crops that are, are growing in the likes of the USA and other, other global um, areas. Uh, so we can test here in New Zealand, but we can then ship that up and test again in the US. Um, so we're getting, uh, you know, been able to test two times a year, which has uh, significant advantages. 
I think the other area of uh, real interest here in New Zealand is the ability to leverage capital. Um, so there's a lot of support from the New Zealand government and the government ecosystem in terms, uh, particularly in the ag tech sector. So through Ministry of Primary Industries, we have what we call the SFFF uh, Fund, the um, Sustainable Farming Fund. Uh, that's where they'll co-invest with industry in, in, in agriculture up to 40, 45% of um, significant projects. These projects can be anywhere from $100,000 to $100 million. Um, so uh, with Robotics Plus, we've been able to leverage a lot of our capital significantly um, by doing um, projects to solve problems here in New Zealand, but with a global focus. And why I say that is, you know, the challenge with New Zealand is we are small, so the, the, the market scalability is small here. But it's a great it's a great place to do the R and D and the research work. Um, so whenever we're creating technologies, we do have a focus that it's got to be solving a global problem, not just a New Zealand problem. And it's actually solving the global problem that allows us to solve the New Zealand problem by being, a, being able to create scale. Um, I think. Uh, why, again, why Tauranga, uh, as Greg mentioned, Zespri, it's the home of Zespri, which uh, Tauranga is one of the sort of, uh, one of the three main key horticulture areas of New Zealand. Uh, so you have Tauranga, Hawke's Bay and uh, uh, Nelson has been um, high horticultural areas. Uh, so being in the environment has a lot of benefits. Uh, we're within the Golden Triangle, as Greg pointed out, between Auckland, Hamilton and Tauranga. Um, so from from uh, a business standpoint, it's it's a very quick commute to Auckland if if need be, um, and so we're in that in that main Golden Triangle, and we have one of the most effective ports in the in in the world here in in Tauranga, so it makes shipping and importing um, quite simple from here. And we're seeing a real build out um, within Tauranga now of of a, a number of tech companies that are successfully um, paving the way in uh, ag tech. Uh, we have uh, companies like Blue Lab who are doing um, um, uh, digital instruments around, um, you know, for horticulture. So providing a lot of product into the US, particularly into the um, uh, cannabis markets, um, into um, high precision horticulture, uh, the likes of Robotics Plus. Um, we have great relationships with the Waikato University, who have a very strong um, engineering uh, division. So you know. Using using the students and the skill, um, bringing those students in through summer internships, uh, doing PhDs and masters, and and so really been able to um, connect well there with the use of the university, the establishment of the Plant Tech Regional Research Institutes that bring in world class AI data skills here that we can tap into and help and solve some of the real curly questions if 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 our own team can't do that. Um, obviously, uh, a lot of investment and support by um, Zespri being a, being a $4 billion horticultural business based here in Tauranga. Uh, so, you know, a really great ecosystem um, evolving around ag here in, in Tauranga. I think that's probably enough for now, and uh, I'll hang out for some questions later. Got to say, thank you for that. Um, Marie, we'll hand over to you for a bit of a, an overview of um, the University of Waikato and particularly uh, your specialty area, sort of the ma macro algal biotechnology. Thanks very much, Greg. Hi, everyone. Um, if you go to my presentation, I think the next slide, hey? Sorry. I can talk anyway. Uh, so I lead a seaweed and macroalgae research program at the University of Waikato. This program has been operational now for, for about four years. You can go to the next slide, Greg, uh, and skip this one because we've already seen where we are. <laughs> um, and uh, so we're a team of... Uh, about 16 to 20 people, depending on the number of students and staff that we have um, at any one time. <laughs> we reach out a lot and actually work a lot with uh, with Priority One as well to have um, summer students and, and interns from uh, from various organisations and, and other students. Yeah. Um, and often quite a few international students who come here as well on someone else's voice. <laughs> Um, uh, who come here for, for internships and, uh, and this sort of study abroad uh, program. So that's obviously been uh, on hold for the last two years, but 
but in the first two years we operated, we were um, uh, had quite a few people uh, coming around. Uh, and so the next slide there, Greg, please. Thank you. And so what we do within the team is we work with um, seaweed and macroalgae on basically all aspects. So from seed to farm. And so this is a very, a very broad group um, with broad expertise in, in algal biology, all the way from, um, from ecology and aquaculture uh, to chemistry and developing products with a molecular understanding of how and why things work. So, so that's sort of our, um, what we what we bring is that critical mass of of, uh, of a very group of people who all work towards the same thing. Um, we one of our main products are around bioremediation, so using seaweed or freshwater macroalgae to mop up nutrients from from either wastewaters or natural environments. And we do have a few of these sort of larger scale industry programs um, around this as well. And uh, we work and collaborate broadly around developing products from, from algae as well. So if you go to the next slide, um, Greg, there's a video in that one. That should be a video of our uh, aquaculture facility. So this is um, a, a really unique facility uh, in, in New Zealand. Um, and this will be part of the... Um, PowerPoint I will share afterwards as well if this video is not playing. But so we've got basically a, um, a thousand square metre um, site with a big greenhouse with uh, lots of tanks for growing algae. So this is um, a recirculating system with uh, uh, a freshwater half and, uh, and a seawater half and we can regulate temperature and flow rates and nutrient concentrations and really do manipulative experiments to um, to maximize productivity and and um, um, and manipulate the actual composition of the algae for various purposes um, and the scale that we can grow here. You can um, go to the next slide, please, Greg. If this one's not playing, uh, try the try the pond video there again um, to the right. If that one will play here. Um, the species that we're focusing on are, um, this is um, sea lettuce here, um, uh, which is uh, Olva, the scientific uh, name. And to the right here is one of the ponds that we're using. So these are uh, 10 by two meter ponds, and we've got 12 of these at our site. So over, over a year, we could grow, if we maximize production through all the ponds, we can grow up to a ton of seaweed in this, in this pilot system. Um, we're using it mainly to produce um, bulk of biomass for our product development um, purposes. So if you go to the next slide, oh, here we go. Yeah. This video. Um, we also work a lot with uh, Common Health. So this is um, Eclonia, the most uh, um, widely distributed seaweed um, kelp in New Zealand. And um, so what Steve was saying around this Ministry of Primary Industries um, SFFF programs, we've got two of these in collaboration with industry partners. And one of them is a, a three year pilot project demonstrating um, in ocean aquaculture and hatchery um, processes for, um, for our common kelp here. Um, so in, in New Zealand, we have uh, most of the seaweed that are make up the bulk of um, global commercial production and aquaculture of sea. We, we don't have those species or even those genera here in, in New Zealand. Um, and what we do have that are similar to, to overseas is, is um, um, invasive here. So we don't, we don't grow it um, on, on purpose. Uh, and so that's why all this uh, we've got, um, on the other hand, we have a really unique seaweed and algal flora. Uh, to produce unique products. It also means that we have, um, we need to develop our own processes and procedures for the cultivation and, and all the way from just on farm processes uh, through to processing and, and distribution chains um, and just building that market. And so we've been collaborating really broadly with, um, with various 
business and industry partners and uh, research institutions to kind of sort of start building that framework um, in New Zealand. Um, so if you go to the next slide, Greg, please. Um, so this is another example of our industry outreach. So we are working together with uh, Keyside, which is the investment arm of the um, regional council here. And they uh, started a spin-off company called Aquacuro, who've built this quarter hectare freshwater bioremediation plant at one of the wastewater treatment plants here. And so here we are using a freshwater algae to um, to basically clean up the excess nitrogen and phosphorus that is uh, released from within consent limits, uh, released from the uh, wastewater treatment plants. Um, and so this has been ongoing um, for a year now. The site was commissioned and inoculated with algae last year, and we're working through optimization and quantifying how much nutrients we can actually uh, remove and how much biomass we can grow in this time and what we can use that material for um, as well. Um, so this is this is super exciting and uh, we'd love to have visitors if anyone's coming by um, to come and poke around in our super tanks and uh, and visit some, um, uh, uh, yes, this is a uh, key side site. Well, it's, um, there's a question from Michelle Cole here. <coughs> um, uh, so key side, Owns it, but Aquacuro is the entity that actually manages it. Right. Um, and um, if you go to the next slide, Greg, please, just to remind me what's there. Uh, so this is just basically a brief overview of some of our research uh, partners. So this is an old slide, so we're actually working with a few more um, people now. So really um, a, a broad network of, of uh, domestic and international research and industry partners. So we're quite well connected in terms of implementation of, of, of our research, which is really where we are really excited about working. Um, we also have in terms of education. So within our team, we work mostly with um, postgraduate students, but we're also teaching into the new undergraduate um, uh, courses here at the, at the brand new fantastic campus here in Toronga. Uh, and so this is sort of really building momentum both within the really vibrant research that's going on here, both with seaweed and, and other um, organisms um, uh, within, within biology and with the rest of the university as well as we're starting to have that base of undergraduate students who can actually do all this hands-on research here as well and live in Toronga and not have to go to Hamilton. <laughs> Um, and uh, that was just really brief uh, from me. I'm very happy to answer any questions you might have. Great, thank you so much, uh, Marie. It was an awesome overview of some pretty exciting kind of R&D um, at the commercial end of the spectrum that's happening here uh, in that space uh, in Tauranga. I'll hand over to Nina now, and uh, Nina's gonna give us a bit of an overview of both Enterprise Angels, but also the actual um, broader capital networks infrastructure that exists locally. Thanks, Greg. Um, do you want to flip to the next uh, slide? Um, okay, so um, in total, we have a really neat uh, startup and capital ecosystem. We've pretty much got end to end uh, in terms of capital raising from ideation right through to public markets. So we've got the Venture Centre um, right at that early stage. Uh, Accelerator, we've got the Acceleration Foundry, which launched last year. We've got Technology Incubator, which um, Steve mentioned earlier. Um, in the angel stage, we've got Enterprise Angels, and we have some sidecar funds that work with us. Um, after that, we have in the venture capital space, Nuance. Um, many of you will know Adrian Gurr um, involved in Nuance. Um, and then we've also got Purpose Capital Impact Fund, which is an impact fund that's 22 million. Um, and that's sort of a bit slightly later stage opportunities, um, making a real social and environmental difference. Um, and Orient's private equity capital, then right at the end of the um, spectrum, we've got Craig's and the public markets. Obviously lots of local support priority ones <coughs> of what we do in this space as well. 
Okay, so because we've got this really neat ecosystem that's end to end, uh, there's lots of local companies on the global stage. It's really thriving in the ecosystem. You heard more about Robotics Plus and Blue Lab earlier. There's some other really neat companies which you've probably heard about in the news as well. Um, our Pro Electric Bikes, uh, Swiped On, uh, which was a company which was acquired by a, a UK listed company. That's a really neat story of how you get this bubble on effect with a maturing ecosystem. So um, now the founder and the senior staff of Swiped On have become Enterprise Angels members and they're mentoring other startups and so it's just this real nice bubbling effect uh, which is great to see. Uh, we've got Law View as well which is going from strength to strength um, and Halal of Vanilla. Uh, so yeah we're the only regional centre in New Zealand to have this really neat ecosystem which is cool and I think it's the lifestyle and the um, culture that really brings everyone in together you know lots of talented people that come here for that lifestyle and, and they see these growing business opportunities and they don't want to leave so I'm actually from Christchurch and you know I won't be going back to Cull down there. <laughs> So we'll dig in a little bit to Enterprise Angels. So we've really been quite a founding pillar of the local startup ecosystem. Back in 2008, when angel investing was first kicking off in New Zealand, I think there were maybe a handful of players in the market. Bill Murphy founded it. It was called Western Bay of Plenty Business Forum, a bit of a mouthful. It was a small group of individuals just investing, you know, according to their own interests and experience. The first four to five years, pretty slow growth, um, but we built a stronger group collaboration, a due diligence, growing member numbers until I think a bit of a pivotal point. I joined in 2013, and at that point, we had quite a few key business leaders that joined the group. Um, Steve, you probably joined uh, around that time as well. Um, and really the depth and breadth of the experience within our group grew and you know we could attract really good deals and really good people as well. So by 2014 we were over 100 members and we launched our first fund which was a sidecar fund so that actually follows what the members do and enabled our members to get a broader diversification in the startup space and also to ensure that our parcels were a bit larger um, when we're uh, when we have companies approaching us. We also launched a Waikato chapter. So when we have pitch events, that's six times a year. We do one event in Tauranga and one in Hamilton as well. Um, although we just had our first in-person event last night, they've been virtual for 10 months. So it was fantastic to have the community together again. Uh, fast forward to 2019 when we launched our third sidecar fund. The funds are fairly small with the third being three million. Um, and during 2019, Bill Murphy launched the Purpose Capital Impact Funds that I mentioned earlier. So $22 million fund. Um, it's investing in asset-backed opportunities that are making a real difference environmentally uh, and socially. It's one of the largest impact funds in New Zealand. Uh, at that point, when Bill moved to Purpose Capital, I um, took the lead in Enterprise Angels um, and have been there since. So we've seen some really neat growth and we've got some scalable investor management systems, robust processes. Um, we're actually launching our investor portal this year, which is um, really neat. Uh, we've got a great connected group of individuals with a lot of experience uh, now. Um, we're actually, this year we're launching our first lead seed fund as such, which is like a normal seed fund, just not a sidecar fund. So it's going to be much the same as our other funds, but it's actually going to be able to take advantage of many other opportunities in New Zealand as well um, to allow our members to get um, access to a more diverse range of opportunities that perhaps don't want to pitch at an angel group. Uh, so a bit more about us. So one of the things that we're really passionate in our team is that, you know, investing in startups is a really great way to um, ensure that you've got um, growth and innovation, solving some really hard problems. Um, and it's great for the business and the community and the economy to thrive. It, it's just a real key part of that problem, I think. Um, so we've got professional staff of seven invested in over 100 startups, um, three sidecar funds, and we've actually, because we've got all these robust systems and everything in place, we're um, expanding our administration and investment services as well. So that's a real sort of core part of our business. Um, but a really deep New Zealand network and market experience. We've got 200 members. So, yeah, fascinating that we're one of the, the largest angel group, um, but the population wise, you know, we're quite small. I guess we get a lot of people that come and retire to New uh, to Tauranga because of the lifestyle. So they have a bit more time and energy to put into uh, supporting startups and, and wealth as well. 
Uh, we've got a network of 130 health sign investors. Actually, our members and investors are spread over New Zealand as well. We've even got a few members offshore. Um, and we have a number of stellar partner organisations that really understand and support the startup space. So they really help us in helping grow these startups and connect them uh, throughout New Zealand. Um, our co-investment relationships are really important and that's probably a testament to their, our reputation and our real collaborative approach. You know, it really takes a village to grow a startup, as many of you are probably aware uh, from your experience. So, you know, that's very much part of our DNA there. Um, one of the things we're doing, so we reached 100 startups and we've been looking at case studies, you know, and we've had about 25 companies that have exited, both positive and negative, and there's learnings across the board with both of them. So we'll be producing these case studies and we're refining the way that we invest and um, move forward. And it's, it's been a really neat journey. Really neat. So we're looking forward to sharing that more with the community. This is a bit of a snapshot of our portfolio. So we've invested more than 60 million uh, since the early days. The majority of that has actually been in the last five years. Um, and as we know, with growing these companies, at, you know, overnight success with 10 years of hard slog behind them. So the portfolio status, we've got almost 60% of them that are either growing or thriving. Uh, and yes, it's some really neat logos in there, which I'm sure you'll recognise. <laughs> uh, our key area that we invest in, so the percentages from the breakdown of the type of companies we invest in, that says a percent of dollars invested. So whilst we invest in more companies at a seed stage, our investors are fairly savvy, and so they double down when they're, um, you know, started to find product market fish and so on. Um, you'll see top company, uh, top type of company invest in is software, which is quite typical of angel investors, but we do have a really large portion of investment in ag tech and hardware. And I think that's a reflection of, you know, the expertise that we have in this region and, you know, what we're really good at as well. Um, we would like to see more investment locally, but the sheer population of Auckland, you know, we, we see lots of startups from Auckland as well, and uh, we certainly invest in them too. This is more a general around the New Zealand startup ecosystem and the timing for investment and growth in tech. Uh, you know, it's a really exciting time. There's a lot of ambitious founders. Um, they're solving these really hard problems. We can make a real difference in terms of jobs and positive impact, um, the environment um, and social as well, um, and really helping to put New Zealand on the map. New Zealand's got a real innovation uh, mindset and reputation, you know, that number eight wire mentality and so on. And, and we've certainly got a reputation for ease of doing business in New Zealand. Our companies are really efficient with capital and they often provide better value for money than their US counterparts, i.e. cheaper. <laughs> uh, the rise in remote working has been really neat for our startups, you know, on the global stage, it makes it easier for them meeting prospective um, clients and partners. Um, you know, it puts them on the same level as anyone um, over in the US because um, they're all meeting by Zoom, although that's opening up again, but I think we've made our mark and we're going to leverage that. Um, as I mentioned earlier, that evolving ecosystem and the second time founders and growing um, is really exciting. And the other thing which is really cool is the amount of follow on capital that we have available now. Um, I think it was about 254 million that was invested in 2021, which was a massive increase on the previous year um, in startups in New Zealand. And, you know, there's been some really good government support in getting that going. And, you know, it was a real struggle in the early days that follow on capital. It's like we'd have to go offshore, but now we've got really lots of um, good partners that we're investing in, we know what they want, it helps de-risk our investment as well. So, um, so that's really um, exciting as well. So um, really neat way to make your mark in New Zealand with this, um, you know, maturing ecosystem, leveraging people's skills and international connections. This is the type of people that we look for, um, you know, it's a really neat infographic we've got. And I don't know if anyone knows Rudy Bublitz from Flying <laughs> Kiwis. He um, picked it up for us with those <laughs> means there, which is what we really love. So, uh, plenty of ways to get involved um, really actively with our fourth seed fund, um, opportunities and in investing, partnering, governance advisory 
obviously getting involved with our startups, both existing and um, new prospective startups that we're working with, um, supporting the group, um, working on the impact side um, with Purpose Capital, um, earlier investors, and obviously there's heaps of earned opportunities to learn and network and grow in this community. It's a, it's a really neat community to be a part of. And yeah, as I mentioned earlier, it was great to catch up with everyone again in person yesterday. Although we have been doing virtual since pre-COVID, so got that pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> that's it from me but yeah open for questions when we get hey thanks uh thanks nina that's awesome and uh you know i think uh, nina's given us that real sense of the uh real innovation and entrepreneurial culture that exists here um and it's a very collaborative business environment so um to round things off i'll ask um david maybe to give um his perception really of new zealand and, and tauranga in particular from a a recent kind of uh, migrants perspective to the city and somewhere he's um, chosen to, um, to to spend a lot more time and reside. So, so David, over to you. Great. Thanks so much. Um, yeah, so I'm David Hopel. I, uh, I live primarily in Mill Valley, a town just across the Golden Gate Bridge from San Francisco. And um, as, as I, my wife and I came to New Zealand, I think First and foremost, there was a lifestyle issue. So we checked out several different towns, the Hawke's Bay area, Nelson, and Tauranga, and all three offer great lifestyle opportunities. But I know enough about myself to know that I'm not going to sit around as a passive investor. Um, I'm looking to actively engage uh, with, with the investments that I make. So, so kind of that second tier of what I was looking for for uh, an area or town that we would settle in was um, the, the economic opportunity to invest, engage with those investments. And so um, ultimately, as I assess that uh, across those three towns, it became very, very clear um, that Tauranga had the greatest, what I would consider ecosystem around early stage businesses in terms of entrepreneurs, in terms of capital availability, and um, uh, so, so, so uh, you know, so much of what you've heard from the other speakers is exactly why I decided, my wife and I have decided to um, settle in the, the Tauranga area. So, um, I, you know, I'm very, very bullish on what I see here. I've spent, you know, the last 20 years in San Francisco and saw how that market emerged. And I see a lot of those foundational components coming together in Tauranga. So, that's um, that. That's kind of my assessment, the process I went through, and why I ultimately concluded that Tauranga was an area that's going to provide me and my wife with what we're looking for for the next chapter of our of our existence. So, um, hope that's helpful for you all, Greg. I'm happy for you to share uh, my contact information and, and be delighted to visit with anyone offline to give you a little more color about that process. Awesome. Thank you so much uh, for sharing that, uh, David. And uh, certainly um, it's been uh, great getting to know David over the last uh, last few years. And uh, he's become a really active participant in the uh, in the local community, um, which is um, which is just, you know, just what we really are looking for. So I um, so really appreciate that, David. So look, we'll um, open it up now for any um, sort of Q&A um, and, uh, you know, please uh, feel free to, to ask, uh, ask anything. Um, we're quite happy to answer open and honestly. That was brilliant, team. I'm like going, wow, I'm learning so much new stuff and I probably want to go uh, to Tauranga. <laughs> I do have a house there that I rent out, but I can get there. I'm on the Mount Monganui side. Um, yeah, so there is actually a question for Marie, and it's come in from Bruce. Is the university looking at a um, just a medical school? I think it was, wasn't it? Yeah, are you looking at establishing a medical school? Do you know, Marie? Uh, yes, there's a, there's a lot of um, talk. I'm actually, honestly, not fully up to speed of where the process it is at now. Um, so I, I can't actually really answer that question. I can I can look into it and, and put you in touch with the right people who could actually answer that properly. Um, I can add a little bit to that. So so yes, uh, Waikato University is uh, it has, is, is exploring the opportunity to, um, to look at um, medicine. Um, we have two universities in New Zealand that currently offer medicine. That's Auckland University and Otago University. Uh, the, the 
a gap in the market that Waikato University saw was um, uh, specialising in medical health, particularly in um, uh, smaller and rural uh, communities in regional uh, New Zealand, which have quite um, unique and different demographic profiles. Um, uh, and uh, that was a, um, a gap that uh, Waikato are uh, looking at. Nice, thank you. Uh, Doug's got a question. Doug, did you want to, um, yes, yeah, you can might as well ask it directly. Sure, uh, thank you very much. And I really appreciate all this information, uh, both of us. And we're, uh, we're interested, uh, uh, I'm an investor fellow from Cohort 8, but, uh, and we're coming to Tarmaya for uh, close to a week to, <laughs> to check it out. And I think one of the, I have a couple of questions of how long should we spend there? Because we're, we're traveling around the country. And uh, David, thanks for uh, very much for your view as well. Uh, and what's the best way to engage? So if we end up there one afternoon, uh, should Greg, should we call you or Nina? Or should we, uh, you know, how should we engage with you guys? Yeah, look, absolutely. Um, feel free to uh, to get in touch with uh, with me. Uh, we can have a bit of a chat around, um, you know, if you've got any particular interests, and uh, in, in which case I can kind of uh, introduce you to the right people. Um, alternatively, I'm very happy to catch up with you and, um, you know, grab a coffee or a beer or a wine or something like that and, and um, talk to you in a bit more detail about some of the things that are happening here too. So. Great. And thank you. This is very helpful. Really helpful. Thanks. So what I will be doing, if me can drop the email addresses in the chat as well, but what I will do is afterwards, I will um, just connect you all. So everyone that's uh, accepted to the invite and then also the ones that couldn't make it because we want to make the, the video and the PowerPoint presentation available to everybody afterwards. Any other questions? A lot of information that, oh, you go, sorry, yeah. Rosalie. Yeah, I didn't see you on the screen there, go for it. No, I just, um, I just first of all want to thank, thank you all, because this has been a really great, I'm sorry that I came in a little late. I had a couple of other urgent things. Um, David, I, I, I was just very interested to hear your journey. And I also wondered if there's any advice that you could give to fellows about, I guess the, the translation or the, um, the, the challenge that you find in coming into another country, you know, uh, embracing another culture, embracing Tao Māori. And I just wonder if there's any sort of insights that you can provide for our fellows and how that links in with Tauranga. Sure. Um, I've found it to be quite frankly, a pretty easy process. Um, um, just anecdotally, I ended up meeting Steve at a restaurant in Amsterdam a few years ago. And through that introduction, we, we, we got to talking and he, he essentially invited me, hey, you got to get to know Tauranga. Um, I've been involved with um, Enterprise Angels. That's been very, very helpful. And, and what I found is there, there's a real sense of community within this Tauranga ecosystem around early stage businesses that you know, with one phone call, you can get to just about anyone. And, and not only in just Tauranga, but I've, I've, I've had that experience across the country that effectively with one phone call, you can generally get to what you need. And that feels very, very refreshing coming here as, as somebody who's been, you know, running and building businesses in the U.S., which can be complicated and so forth. So yes. um, I, I've, I've found it, it's, it, I would refer to it as refreshing. So. Brilliant. That's great. Thank you. Um, Tina, have you got a, you've got your hand raised. You've got a question or a response there? Thanks, Michelle. Can you hear me okay? Perfect. Hi. Hey, I just want to say um, everything that's been acknowledged is, you know, is, is what makes Tauranga so special and um, exactly why I moved here 12 years ago. So, I am a little bit different in that I came into New Zealand under the general skills category about 20 years ago, and then 12 years ago decided to raise my four children in Tauranga because of all the research that Greg said. And I cannot stress it enough, you know, asking for help. There's no question about, you know, being part of the first co-working space that, that um, Priority One um, created a handful of years ago was a, was a big connector. Um, supporting the work of Enterprise Angels, Nina's amazing work, 
um, getting to support some of Steve's work and building that horticulture ecosystem. Um, the thing is just, you know, ask for help and, and offer support. Um, I, I got to yacht race, everything's so accessible. I got to yacht race while I did my MBA at Waikato University and both were great networking tools. Um, everything is really, really accessible here. So um, if there's anything I can do for anybody, please reach out. Um, I very much work behind the scenes, um, but would love to support in any way I can. So thank you. It was great to celebrate Taranga through this presentation. Thanks, Tina, that's Yoda. great. That's amazing. Um, and for those of you that don't know, Tina is a fellow, so do reach out to her. And also Deborah might still be on the call as well. Deborah is a fellow and she's also offered um, her information if anyone and her, I think she put her email address in there if anyone wants to reach out to her directly as well. Kia ora. Oh, there you are, Debs. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and David, I didn't realise you were here around the corner pretty much. So um, there is a handful of, of Tauranga fellows um, as well as Tina. There's um, Abko, Tim, um, and there's yeah, myself um, and obviously Adrian and David now. I didn't realise you were here. So there's quite a, a lovely little group that's beginning to form as well. So um, it's always fun to get together and, and share stories and, and just hang out as well as um, getting on with our all important mahi. So nice to meet you all. Thanks, Deborah. Yeah, that's really good. And then, yeah, so Peter, who you may not have uh, in um, Marie's presentation, uh, Peter was in one of those slides uh, in, in there, Peter. Um, uh, Ren, Ren, Ren? Yeah, yeah. Any other questions for the team? All good. Well, thank you. If um, everyone has put their email addresses in the chat, that's great. But we will do a follow-up email with the presentation and the PowerPoint for those that couldn't make it. And I sincerely thank you all panel for your mahi today. That was an amazing presentation. I absolutely loved it. I love that colorful background. It just makes me want to go there and full stop. And those statistics and that it's the, the fastest growing city. And I love it that it's part of that uh, golden triangle. It's just been amazing. Um, so thank you very much team. And we will get this um, for you so that you can share it and utilize the material. And I appreciate all the time that you've put into this today. It's been great, Greg and the team. Thank you. Oh, thanks everybody and thanks to you, Michelle, for the opportunity uh, and happy to connect with, uh, with anybody who wants to uh, follow up. Thank you, team. Thanks, everyone. Yeah.